Good morning. In our lesson for today, we'll be talking about multiplication and division of fractions. But before we go to our main lesson, let's have some review first. In the previous lesson, we talked about fraction. So what do you mean by fraction? We said that if you have one whole, and if you want to cut that into, let's say, two equal parts, we did it like this. From one whole, we have the same length, and we cut that into two equal parts. We have this fraction, which we call as one half. If, let's say, we have this one whole, and we want to cut that into three equal parts, we have this fraction we call as one third. If we want to take two parts, we call this two thirds. If we want to take all these three parts, we call this as three over three or one whole. Now, in terms of notation, we say that the number at the bottom is called denominator and the number at the top is called numerator. The number at the bottom tells us into how many parts the whole is divided into. So in this case, the one whole is divided into three equal parts. That's why you have see that number at the bottom, three. Now the number at the top tells us how many parts are we taking. If I take one out of the three parts, we call this length as one third. If I want to take two parts, one, two, together, this is called two thirds which brings us to the addition of fraction. To add fractions, you simply add the number at the top, or the numerator. So you add the 1 and the 1 to get 2. So together, this is 2 over 3. For subtraction, it's like this. Let's say I have this fraction. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I have 7 over 10. If I'm going to subtract 1 over 10 from here, so this is the 1 over 10, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this much from 7 over 10. So I'm going to remove 1 over 10. That act of removing 1 over 10, so I remove this 1 over 10, is the same as saying I have 7 over 10 and I subtract and I remove, I subtract, I take away 1 over 10. And the result now would be from 7 over 10, we have 6 over 10 remaining. So the act of removing that part is equivalent to saying we are subtracting that much and operationally that is the minus sign now with that as our review let's move to our main lesson which is multiplication and division of fractions what I have here are fraction cards so another way of representing one half instead of this bar is we can use this card so it's one blue out of two parts, one, two. So we're taking one part out of two parts. So you can have, let's say, five parts out of eight parts. So this is called five over eight. Now, to represent multiplication, let's say you want to multiply one half multiplied by one half. How do we represent that visually? So this is one half. If I want to get one half of that, this is what I'm going to do. I have another fraction. This is also one half. The yellow out of two parts is one half. This is the blue out of the entire part is one half. So this is one half multiplied by another one half. So this the first one half. This yellow is the second one half. If I multiply the two, Visually, you can imagine it's like this. I overlap those two fractions, and the product of one half and one half would be the intersection of the blue and the yellow. So let's look at the parts. There are four equal parts, one, two, three, four. But the intersection between the blue and the yellow would only be this part. So it's one out of four parts. So one half times one half equals one fourth. Let's look at another example. Okay, let, let me randomly get any fraction here. Let's say I have one fourth. If I want to get, let's say, what is 
1 fourth times 3 over 5. We can overlap these two fractions. So let me, let me write it. 1 fourth times 3 over 5. You can overlap these two fractions and you get the intersection over the total number of squares. So there are one, two, three intersections, but there are how many parts all in all? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So out of twenty parts. Now let's take one more example. So for example, if you have six over eight times nine over ten times 9 over 10, you can think of that as this 6 over 8 intersecting, overlapping 9 over 10. And then the product is the intersection of the yellow and the blue. So you have 1, 2, 3, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, so we have 54 out of 8 by 10, so you have 80. Now, I would like you to look at our few cases here. We have 1 half times 1 half equals 1 fourth. 1 fourth times 3 over 5 equals 3 over 20. 6 over 8 times 9 over 10 equals 54 over 80. Is there any pattern that we can generalize so that if you apply that pattern, that rule that you are going to come up with, then you can apply that to other multiplication of fraction problems in the future. And you don't need all these manipulatives anymore to visualize. Because in your mind, you can picture out that when you multiply fraction, you are just overlapping these two fraction cards and you are getting their intersection that represents the answer to the multiplication problem. So, let's look at the pattern. If you multiply the top, 1 times 1, you get 1. And if you multiply the denominators, you get 2 times 2 is 4. So, it looks like when you have two fractions, A over B, A over B represents the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction. And if you multiply it with another fraction, C over D, the pattern looks like you are just going to multiply the top, A times C and multiply the denominators B times D. So when I say multiply the top, multiply the numerators. Does it work for the second case? 1 over 4 times 3 over 5 equals 3 over 20. If we multiply the numerators, 1 times 3 is 3, that works. 4 times 5 is 20, that also works. Now 6 over 8 times 9 over 10 equals 54 over 80 according to our exploration. But if you multiply 6 by 9, you get 54, that works. And 8 by 10 is 80, that works. So, our rule is working. And since we verify that this rule works for all cases, now we can generalize that this is the rule for multiplying fractions. Now, I would like you to notice this 54 over 80. If you have a fraction like 1 half, and you have another fraction, like 2 over 4, and you have another fraction, like 3 over 6, what do you notice? They're all having the same length. 1 half, 2 over 4, and 3 over 6 represent the same length. And so we now say that they are equivalent fractions. We say that 1 6 is a higher term, 1 fourth is a higher term, but among the three fractions, 1 half is the lowest term. It's very important because when we have this 54 over 80, we can still represent that into another fraction which we call as the lowest term. And how do we get these terms? If I know 1 half, if I multiply 1 half by the same number, let's say multiply the numerator by 2, multiply the denominator by 2, you will get 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so this is 2 over 4. If I multiply the 1 half by 3 over 3, I will get 3 over 6, which is this 3 over 6. And when we do the reverse operation, if you have 
3 over 6 to get the lowest term 1 half you just think of a number that can divide both the numerator and the denominator and that number must be the greatest common factor to get the lowest term so this 54 over 80 can be divided by 2 over 2 to get 27 over 40 and since 27 and 40 do not have common factors anymore we now say that 27 over 40 is its lowest term now your question might be what if we have mixed numbers how do we multiply mixed numbers the answer is we apply the same rule only that we are going to perform one more step if I have let's say 1 and 3 fourths multiplied by 1 and 1 half so this is our second example to multiply this you can just convert them into improper fraction so you get 1 times 4 is 4 plus 3 is 7 copy the denominator times 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2 and so you get 21 divided by 8 and then if you want to write this in mixed number again you will get 21 divided by 8 is 2 you get 16 and you get 5 so it's going to be 2 and 5 over 8 okay now the next question is what if we want to visualize division of fractions how do you visualize division of fractions using these fraction bars now for division of fraction we have to recall the definition of division with respect to multiplication so division is the inverse operation of multiplication now let's do division of fraction using this fraction card let us recall that division is the inverse operation of multiplication which means that if I have a multiplication problem I can turn that into a division problem by getting the reciprocal of the fraction let, let me demonstrate that let's say I have one half and I have another half when I multiply these two we said that we can write that as one half times one half equals one over four because there is one intersection out of four parts to perform division we now start with this one fourth if you have one fourth and we divide this one fourth by one half one fourth is the intersection and we divide this one fourth by one half one half is that side from here to there the answer would be the length of this other side so we now say one fourth is this one inside that's the one fourth divided by this side with the length of one half that its length is one half so divided by one half the answer would be the length of the other side which is also one half so we now therefore say that one fourth divided by one half is equal to one half but as I have said division is the inverse operation of multiplication if I have this division problem I can turn this into a multiplication problem and then we can apply what we know about the rule for multiplication of fractions so how do you do that if I have one fourth divided by one half I can get I can change this division into multiplication but I'm going to get the reciprocal of one half which is 2 over 1 and then since we have a multiplication problem here we now have 1 times 2 is 2 4 times 1 is 4 and then we reduce the lowest term divide by 2 and then divide by 2 we get 1 half that is what is being demonstrated here if I have 1 fourth 
and I divide it by one half. So the one fourth is the area inside divided by the length of this side, one half. The answer visually is the length of the other side, which is one fourth. And in terms of algorithms to perform division of fraction to divide one fourth by one half, we transform this division problem into multiplication problem like this. Copy the first fraction, one fourth. Then the division sign is changed to multiplication. And then the second fraction is turned into its reciprocal from one half that becomes two over one. And by doing so, we transform this division problem into a multiplication problem. And since we know the rule for multiplication of fractions, then we know how to solve this problem. And visually, when we divide fractions, we think of it this way. The first number, one-fourth, this one-fourth, is the first fraction, this one-fourth, is this area inside. And the divisor one-half is the length of one of the sides and the quotient board is the length of the other side. So for multiplication, we are dealing with the side and the side. Multiply these sides, we get the product, which is the area inside. For division, it's the reverse. The first fraction is the area inside and then the divisor is the length of one of the sides and the quotient is the length of the other side. So at this point, I would like you to pause for a moment and write in your reflection notebook what you have learned so far.